Big techs have been in the news as presidential hopeful Senator Elizabeth Warren vows she will break up companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google and Apple if she wins the White House next year. President Trump himself has also threatened the likes of Google and Facebook and has proposed raising prices for shipping packages which could hit online retail giant Amazon. Here to look at the threats the tech giants could face in the coming years is Vitaly Mosinov. He is global technology analyst at TD Asset Management joining me here in studio. You know, this is I think the one thing I, you know when you think about technology for the past uh, decades. They've had almost, I don't want to say free ride, because that's not the way I want to put it, but regulators have not been as focused in this world as it looks as though they are right now. So um, right now we're not seeing a huge reaction in the stocks that, that, that they, they're, they're con or investors are concerned they're going to be broken up. Should they be? Well, it was certainly a big headline. Um, I mean, Warren came out and basically said, she said two things, but the really big thing she said is, we're going to break up big tech. Uh, we're going to unwind all the mergers that made these companies who they are today. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she said something a little smaller, and she said, all the big platform companies, as she calls them, we're not going to let them compete against the users in this, on their platforms. So for example, Amazon, they can no longer sell things in parallel to third-party sellers on Amazon.com. Um, so definitely a big headline, but probably the reaction is more appropriate, given this isn't something that happens overnight, and she's not exactly the president of the U.S., right? Yeah, good point. She's not president of the U.S., and we know how quickly government moves on things, and, and the, but sometimes even the threat of it is enough to, to, to scare off a lot of stocks right now. Um, why do you think she's targeting the big tech she is? I mean, is this a political issue, or do you think there's a fundamentally like an anti-competitive thing going on? Well, I think that a couple of things. I mean, first, this is incredibly consistent with her messaging from her prior career. Yeah. Um, she's always been a cons big consumer advocate, and she has come out and said that, look, these big tech companies, in her opinion, they're using some anti-competitive behaviors and measures. Mm -hmm. uh, and she says it's bad for the economy, uh, it's bad for society, uh, it's bad for free speech, and we need to fix this. The second factor is more holistic. I mean, it's society. And any time a big actor in our society becomes as powerful as these tech companies, uh, I think we all look back and so look at it and say, oh gosh, uh, is this going to pose a threat in some way? And with the five biggest companies in the world all being the ones she's targeting, uh, it's only natural that that dialogue sort of begins to evolve. So now, if I'm understanding you then, you see this as a risk, but maybe not a near-term risk, is something that something to watch. It is definitely something to watch. Uh, it's it just, we have to remember, it, Warren is not the first to bring regulatory risk out to the open. Uh, big companies, uh, monopolies, oligopolies, whatever you want to call it, this has been a debate that U.S. society has had for over 100 years. Mm. Uh, it's a debate many other societies are having as well. So Trump is, an, is another actor who, of course, has not had very nice things to say about tech, and especially Amazon. So Warren has sort of put a goalpost for us at the very other extreme end of things. That's important to watch. But it's more about watching where the dialogue is going uh, between different actors and what some practical resolutions might be. OK, so let's let's skip. So when you hear all this, I mean, this is what you do. You watch it. Um, you, uh, you know, from from a, from an asset management standpoint, are looking at these and value the stocks. How do you factor in what is noise and what is notable in terms of what's material to you actually have to start thinking about to value these companies? Right. So the first thing we just spoke about is the markets are already aware that there is some regulatory aspect to everything. Yeah. The second thing is we have to remember the kind of companies that we're dealing with. Uh, if when we think about the Apples and the Facebooks and the Googles, one of the things that comes to mind is the products that they have, how much consumers love those products, and how much they value what they have. Because oftentimes we don't see ourselves paying for these products. I don't know what I would do in a foreign country if I didn't have Google Maps. Yeah. And so when we think about risks, we also think about how are people going to react? Part of the reason that we think this is benign to some extent is the consumer is actually the citizen, right? The consumer is the voter. Yeah. And right now, the consumer is having trouble connecting what Warren is saying with what they want. Because if she breaks up big tech and we no longer have some of the things we've come to abuse and love from these companies, that's a problem, right? Um, they may have a lot of power, but they're using that power arguably to help consumers. And the yeah. consumer is what we're actually watching. Does that dialogue shift? Well, I, was say, I just interrupt. I've only got about a minute here, but you know, you see the whole delete Facebook movement and those types of things too. I mean, is that a movement that makes great headlines, but no one's actually doing it? Well, that's the thing. And, and Facebook was that initial venture that we had into having this bigger dialogue as a society about how much power should these companies have. But what we saw is nobody really left Facebook, aside from, of course, the headlines, and they have more users than ever, more power than ever, and more advertising dollars than ever. So we do have to be cautious. There will be headlines, especially going into an election. 
but we have to measure ourselves and say, okay, what is realistic? What can actually happen? And what is noise that creates opportunities for us as investors? Um, so I've only got about 30 seconds. Uh, let me ask you then, when you look at the valuations of, of this sector, I'm not talking about company by company, are they fair valuations right now? Are you seeing opportunities or do you think they're kind of a little higher than they should be? We think valuations are fairly, uh, very reasonable. Yeah. Uh, if you think about, again, going back to the products these companies have, the markets that they're going, that they're going after in terms of potential revenue and earnings, Mm. the growth rate of those markets. Uh, these are big markets that they dominate and we see a lot of potential. Valuations are rather reasonable. So when th things like this happen, headlines, that's opportunities for us. Vitaly, a pleasure having you here. Will you come back? Absolutely. Thank Vita you. And my pleasure. Vitaly Masanov, he's Global Technology uh, Analyst with TD Asset Management.